and go through the homework assignments so you know how to how to do it. So I have a you know if you look at the website since on Wednesday I told you you guys are not ready to do the homework, right? So if you have been working on that and you feel frustrated, that's not my fault because I haven't covered that yet. I mean, after today, it's going to be easy. So if, if you see that, I since I told you on Wednesday, I'm going to move this homework assignments to Friday, right? So if you see this column is on Friday, that means it won't be, you are not ready to, to work on this until Friday. Is that clear? Okay. So after today, you'll be ready. So let's not waste uh, too much time and let's try to get everything done today. Remember the summary, the table? What are these parameters? VAV, IAV, like in more, more, a little bit more space. VRMS. Efficiency, efficiency and PIV. What is PIV? Pick inverse voltage. Pick inverse voltage. What is what does that mean? Yeah, remember one keyword. Sometimes it's confusing. Is this parameter you can get from the data sheet or not? Can you look for PIF from the styles data sheet? No, no. Because remember one keyword, I got confused at the very beginning as well. So PIV is a peak inverse voltage, but remember one keyword, which is not included into the name, which is possible, possible. So the highest possible peak inverse voltage, right? So that comes from the source. So depends on what kind of voltage source you connect to the dial. So you cannot find this information from the dial, from the dial's data sheet. Because it's from the user. But so that's uh, circuits. Uh, the circuits is going to give a maximum inverse voltage, but actually the the dial is able sometimes is not able to handle that voltage. Did I make it right? Um. I think so. I think that's right. So that's the highest possible inverse voltage can be applied to the dial. But you have to look at the, the highest uh, inverse voltage the dial can handle from the data sheet. But the name of that voltage is not PIV. It's a different name, a similar concept. Right? That's the po highest possible voltage can happen. But however, the, the dial may be make, uh, maybe not able to uh, handle that voltage. Okay. So VAV is what? Over pi?
What is here? What is this one? Two. Right here, uh, so you got twice as my twice as many as uh, the the pumps this guy has. So this is two vm over pi. This is two im over pi. This is vm over square root of two. So what's the efficiency here? Let's derive it pretty soon. What is this? It depends. If you have a center tapped two wave rectifier, uh, it will be different from the bridge two wave rectifier. And we are going to, you know, look at the two different types of rectifier, full wave, full wave rectifiers. Center tap. For example, I mean, use whatever example here. Look at that, one to two ratio. So before I do that, let's be clear about transformers. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this page pretty soon. Let's look at transformers first. Make sure you guys know what, what are they. So that's a voltage from the outlet. You directly plug in on the wall, you are getting this. And you have a transformer. Ten to one ratio, which is the number of turns of the two coils. So this is ten times more than this. What's the voltage here will be? That's it. Very simple. You don't need to know what's what's going in there. This is um, electrical currents uh, transfer to magnetic field, and magnetic field get into here and being converted into electric field and electrical currents. Right? They have a turn to one ratio for the number of turns of the coil. You are getting 11 volts here, and this is an RMS value. So is that RMS value? a peak value or VPP value. So is it, for example, this is a VR, VRMS, right? So that's a peak of the RMS voltage. Is this peak here 110 volts or 55 volts? So which means is this voltage, the peak to peak voltage or the amplitude? Amplitude. Why is not peak to peak? Because you never have a peak to peak voltage at the same time. This is time. These are not even happening at the same time. So you are not having that voltage uh, drop. It's always so the maximum voltage is 110, and that's a VRMS. So whenever you are seeing 100, 110 volts AC. In the US, right? So the, from the outlet, it is 110 volts. And that's RMS. It's not peak voltage. It's a peak voltage of the sound wave, but it's not a, the real peak voltage. Okay? So in that case, here you got 11 volts, which is also RMS. You agree with that? Okay, so that's the first thing you need to know. 
The second thing, if I have another transformer, 110 volts, <clears throat> and I ground the middle, the center top, so I ground the right at the middle of this coil, then what's the voltage swing here? Also, still RMS, we're not talking about anything else. 110 volts RMS, so it looks like this. What about this, if it's 10 to 1? No, from here to here, the voltage drop. Voltage, voltage drop, I'm not asking for a voltage compared to ground. I'm asking for the voltage drop. What, why, why this matters? Does that matter or doesn't matter for the voltage drop over here? It doesn't matter. You get 100 turn here, 10 to 1, you're getting uh, 11 volts across these two terminals. It's not being changed. So the only thing that's being changed is what? For here, normally you're ground here. So it's going to be 11 volts compared to the ground and 0 volts compared to the ground. So the voltage drop is going to be 11 volts. But here is different. Where is ground? In the middle. So what's the voltage here? 5.5. What's the voltage here? Is that making sense? What's the drop? 11. So the entire drop is not changing. But the value here compared to the ground is changing. Make sense? Great. We need to be clear about this so we can move forward. <clears throat> Center tap with rectifier. And I have an example, looks like this. So Trevor, are you comfortable with all this uh, voltage and current stuff? Because you have circuit one in the, in the past, right? Yeah. Good. And because different professors may have different languages for all these you know, uh, terms, but should be similar enough. So this is one to two. Center tapped. The load, RL. That's VO. That's ground in the middle. So this is our center tap full wave rectifier. So now let's look into that. Um, you have a plus minus plus minus. <clears throat> Since it's one to two, if this is VI, for example, RMS, okay, what's the voltage here? Drop. What's the, so if this is VI, is the one to two, what's the voltage here? Two VI, is that two VI? One to two ratio? So VI, two VI. Totally two VI, so what is this, what is this? Are you okay with that? Okay, cool. On the top half of the sound wave, because you know here is a sound wave. So the voltage across these two terminals will be a sound wave as well. However, VO won't be a sound wave. Why is that? Let's look at that. So for example, if I'm getting a, so for example, here is still, here is still sound wave. Here is still sound wave because it's being transferred from here to here. It's still a sound wave like this. But on the top half, 
what's the uh, direction of the current flow for this circuit on top half? So on the top half, here is, so here, since this, this guy is grounded, which means this is zero volts. And here is above zero, and amplitude is VI, right? Zero, above zero, will this be conductive or not? Will, right? So the dial, your, your anode side has a higher potential than the cathode side. So it's going to flow like this. And VO looks like what? This VI, since here is the voltage potential drop from this point to ground, which is the middle pin, the voltage drop is VI, and this is conductive, it's going to conduct the VI to here, which is exactly VO. So what the VO looks like? Same, if we don't consider the voltage drop, 0 0.7 volts, voltage drop across the, the dial. Does that work? What about here? You are saying, hey, just look at on the top. So we didn't analyze what was happening on, at the bottom. Let's take a look. If here is on the top, what's the voltage here? Zero, right? Still zero. What's the voltage here? So when we are talking about the voltage, like I ask if I have a circuit, just think about whatever circuit. Ask, what's the voltage here? What does that mean? Yeah, what's the voltage here compared to ground? If you compare to somewhere else, it's not that voltage. I just didn't see that all the time. All the voltages are relative, right? So when I'm asking, what's the voltage here? What does that mean? Compared to the ground, where's the ground? Here. So what's the voltage here compared to the ground? Negative VI. So in terms of the voltage potential on the two sides of this dial, which side is higher, which side is lower? Higher where? Here. This is zero. This is negative. Do you have anything passing this dial? No, it's not working at all. So. It is actually something looks like uh, uh, this. Okay, but you get a still get a bump at the output. Where does that come from? Here. So now let's look at the bottom wave. So when it's running in this phase, just do it inversely, so you are still getting a bump, but here it's being cut. So nothing is going to flow through this dial. So if you combine, because this is the same output, same pain, so you actually are always getting bumps. So that's why it's a full wave rectifier. So the overall VO is going to be like this. So it's more efficient. That's why it's called full wave rectifier. So last time we introduced the bridge full wave rectifier, and but I didn't. I don't think we finally calculated the the peak and the efficiency. So let's look at the efficiency first, and then we're going to look at the peak for this one and also the bridge full wave rectifier. So you know, if you since I, this one I don't have a, a low pass filter, which is a cap. If I have a cap, it will be filtered, so all the uh, ripples will be filtered out. And I'm going to get in something like this. It's not pure DC, but close to DC. That's what you want, actually. And so if, you, if, if we, are, we only look at this final output, let's try to derive the efficiency for uh, this kind of output. Because you are getting the same output from this type of Full wave, full wave rectifier, and also the bridge full wave rectifier. So do, do they have the same efficiency or different efficiencies? 
No, this full wave rectifier and the other full wave rectifier, which is the bridge, the bridge full wave rectifier. Do you still remember that one? The bridge version. Sorry. I still remember this one, right? So the output here is grounded. Here's the load resistor. Here's VL. Can I still remember that? The full wave rectifier is giving you the same output. Does this one and this one, do they have the same efficiency? Yes, they do. They have the same output. So how to derive it? So efficiency equals to P, actually P load, the power of the load over the power of the RMS. And the power of the load equals to the average voltages square times R over, oh, current, sorry. So the average current times R square and uh, RMS, the current square times R. Cancel. <clears throat> also canceled. And VAV equals to what? Here. Mm. VM over pi. What is this? VM over square root of two. Which is four VM square over pi square over Vm square over two. And canceled, canceled. Flip this to the top, you're getting A times A over pi square. Eighty one point one four. Any questions so far? Cells, no ideal cases. All right, so the efficiency is calculated in this way. And now the peak, so the peaks for these two structures. Let's look at the center tap one first. <laughs> I shouldn't draw this one. Never mind. Anyway, so you know this AC voltage is coming. And here's grounded, here's VO, here's RL. So we just need to take one example, which means when here is not conducting anything, 
what's the possible inverse voltage across this dial from here to here? Inverse, right? So which means it's not conducting. So what's the highest possible voltage here? So we are taking that example. For example, we here is VI and has a peak voltage, which is VM for this VI. So this coil is swing like VM it's, and it's one to two. We are getting one VM here, one VM here. The VI actually has a peak voltage with a VM, right? Is that correct? If I do it in this way? Sorry for the mess. Okay. So the magnetic field will travel a pretty long distance and arrive here and become an electric field. <laughs> okay. VM, VM, VM. Make sense? So if we ignore the voltage drop across the dial, VM, what's the voltage, what's the maximum voltage here? Pos what's the maximum possible peak voltage will happen at this point? VM. So it's going to be like here plus minus VM. Because this is ground, right? VM, VM. So what's the voltage here? <laughs> What's the circuit law? Hmm? You're, you're, actually, this is, this is a um, open circuit, right? This is a reverse, reverse voltage, which means it's an open circuit at the bottom, no, at the top half. So it's not conducting. But you have a VM here, pl minus plus VM, minus plus VM. So what's the voltage at these two terminals? It's open circuit. Is that 2 VM? Yeah, just imagine you are you have a battery here, and you put another battery here. Put it in series, you are getting 2 VM. This is how you calculate the peak for the center type rectifier. If you are you have a VM here, then it's 2 VM here. Doesn't matter if this is a half VM, so this will be VM. All right. What about the bridge? This is the top half that's conducting in this way. So this dial here is experiencing the inverse voltage, which has a peak inverse voltage. So this will be the peak. And what is that? What's the peak voltage across these two terminals? Vm? So what about this one? So the voltage difference here will be Vm. And we are assuming there's no voltage drop across the dials. What is Vo? What is the maximum voltage for Vo? Vm. You're just thinking like this is a wire, this is a wire. So Vm across these two resistors, still Vm. Then what about these two terminals? What's the maximum peak? Maximum vo inverse voltage? Vm. Since here is Vm, and this is a wire, so this is also Vm.
Should be VM. No, let's yeah, let's look at this, right? Because this this pin is being shorted to the ground. So VM, 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 VM. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> So what if there is a, you have to consider the so these are the homework assignments. If you, have, you have to consider the voltage drop close the dial, what's gonna happen here? Before we do that, let's look at one quick example so we can prepare you for these assignments. So these are the questions. DC output. So when, it's, when you are being asked to get the DC output voltage, it's actually uh, asking you to get the VAV by definition. Okay, DC output voltage. Then that's the VAV. And the circuit looks like this. Here's the outlet output. Transformer. Here's the art load, the load resistor. And uh, we still want to ignore the, the ideal dials. No building potential for the dials. Where's the ground? Here. Answer all these questions. And this is 110 volts at 60 hertz, with the standard uh, outlet voltage in the US. First one, what's the DC voltage output? So just calculate the VAV. So what is the VAV? We need to know what is this? That's the RMS voltage. What's the, what's, what's the RMS here? Eleven volts. So we know VRMS. Can you get VAV? Since VRMS equals to V m over square root of two for full wave rectifiers so vm equals to this times what is this
That's a peak voltage, 15.56, right? And also we know VAV equals to what? VM over pi. That's it. Wait, did I make it right? No, two times. Your... That's for half wave. <laughs> That's full wave. So this will be 9.9 .9 volts. 9.8, uh, 9. Point... wait. 9.9 .9 ohm, right? B. Rectification efficiency for all full wave rectifiers is always 80%, uh, 80 point something percent. Uh, but if, if I'm asking you to derive it, do you want to know how to derive it? Yeah, so you don't even need to use plug in the numbers. It's P load over PRMS. And the P load is calculated from the AV. So it will be VAV square over VRMS RMS square Any questions by far? Yeah, I, I did. I have done this in the past, so I I'm not trying to explain every step here, but it's pretty uh, obvious, right? And then C. Peak inverse voltage. Vm. What is VM? Fifteen point five six volts. D output frequency. What's the output frequency? So what's the input? What's the output? Hmm? What's the frequency of the input? Come on, what's the frequency of the input? 60 hertz, what's the frequency of the output? What's the frequency of the output? 120. One second, two second, one second. So the period here is two seconds. Frequency is one over T, which is this. For example, not 60 hertz, just for example, right? So T is one second. F is 1 over T, which is 1 over 1, which is 1 hertz. Make sense? <clears throat> okay, so that's for this example, which is easier, but let's look at the homework assignments. Sometimes we have to consider the 
voltage drop across the dials. Look at the first one. Is that clear? Take uh, two minutes to read it. And then I'm going to start talking about it. It's also on the website. If you have a computer, you want to look at that one, which is fine. But yeah, there's not too much stuff in the in the rectifier. It's just input AC voltage and a rectifier. That's it. I'm not changing anything. It's the same, pretty much the same example, same circuit. I'm just changing the value sometimes. It's 120, not 110. So you notice the 10 to 1 ratio. What's the RMS here? So what's this guy asking here? What's the peak voltage of the rectified output? What's the peak voltage of the rectified output? Uh, what is this asking? What is this asking? VM? VRMS? VAV? VM. Right? So what is VM? What is VM? Okay. Do you need to consider the voltage drop? I actually should say that here. Do not ignore. I just put it here, but I didn't put it here. So do not ignore the doubt. So uh, do not. Do not ignore V doubt. Minus how many 0 0.7 volts? One or two? So this circuit is equivalent to what? Can I just drag it this point to here? Can I? I can, right? Because they are the same, same node. Ground. Just drag it. So you are getting this, which is something we are more familiar with. So you know here is what? 12 VRMS. But times this, that's a VM. We're only looking at the VM. So that's a VM here, and here's grounded, here's RL, here's VO. So here's this. What is this? That's what's this asking. So you have to consider all these voltage drops. Okay, so I'm asking, what's the VM here? I'm talking about what's the voltage there compared to where? Ground. So what's the entire voltage drop? You know, since it's only conducting in one way at one time. So what's the total voltage drop? Let's get the value here. Twelve times one point four one four. Wait, is it that? Is this right? Okay, twelve times. So this is sixteen times sixteen point nine seven volts. You got one drop, 
another drop. Okay, so what's the voltage across these two terminals? How many components you have in this one pass? How many components you have in the circuit? Three. How many drops you should have? Three. One drop? I don't know. One drop? So you know two drops, which are 1.4 volts. And you have another drop you don't know, which is what you want to calculate. Because this is exactly, this drop here, exactly the voltage here, because this is compared to the ground. So what's the voltage here? Peak voltage. Let's do it again. Did you get that? So how many drops in total? Three. You have three drops, and you are trying to calculate the one of the three drops. Is that right? So one of the three drops equals to the total drop minus the other two drops. Is that clear? Is this right? <laughs> A little bit different than what you are thinking at the very beginning, right? One minus, since you can see, here's the voltage, and I got one drop, I got this voltage. Why is that is not right? Because this is not ground. If this point is ground, then you are right. It's not ground. It's a little bit lower than ground. And what's the voltage here? What's the voltage here? If I'm pointing to this line, what's the voltage here? Negative 0 0.7. It's not ground. So you cannot just say, hey, I got a drop one drop, like just minus 1.0.7, but actually it's not right. You have to minus two. You have three drops, and you're calculating for one drop. You have to minus the, the other two drops. Okay, so that's the trick here. So you know how to calculate this one? You got a peak voltage and minus two drops, you're getting the uh, peak rectified output. B, derive the uh, rectifying efficiency for the full rectifying, yeah, 80%, right? 80 something percent, just the same, same thing. Just You just need to list all the uh, numbers, parameters in the equation. What's the PIF? You cannot ignore the dial voltage. <laughs> Again, what's the PIF? What's the PIV? PIV is here. So what's the voltage here? Whenever you got a VM across these two terminals, what's the voltage here? If this is VM. 6 point. Let's, let's take a look. Um, what's the voltage here compared to the ground? This, right? And you got a 0 0.7 voltage increase. Just plus 0 0.7. Is that right? So this point, compared to this point, the voltage in terms of comparing to the ground is whatever here plus a 0 0.7 will be the voltage drop over here. This is also compared to the ground. So it's going to be this minus this, not the second one. So that's the PIV. So the PIV is not VM anymore. The PIV is VM minus 0 0.7 volts. Okay, great. That's this, the problem one. Problem two, I mean, I'm not asking for, uh, is there the same circuit? So this is one problem, not two problems, okay? So for the following full wave center tapped rectifier, find the rectified DC output. So when I'm asking for rectified DC output, what is that? Even though I, I know I don't have a dial, uh, a cap, but you're thinking like, you're imagining I have a cap here. So you're going to you know, rectify, you know, get, get, getting a DC voltage. So find the rectified DC output. VF, right? V average. 
and you cannot ignore the 0 0.7 volts across the dial again. So how to calculate it? What's the input voltage? 110 here. And it's 10 to 1. So what's the voltage here to here, totally? 11. So what's here? Look at the ground. The middle pin is grounded. So find the rectified this. So you are asking it's asking for a VAV, and you know VAV equals to VM over what? That's full wave, right? So two VM over pi. And you don't know VM, but you know VRMS. So V R M S equals to VM over this. So you can calculate for VM and plug in VM over here to get VAV. But however, it it has a 0 0.7 voltage drop for the VM. Keep in mind. One is there one 0 0.7 voltage drop or two 0 0.7 voltage drop? One. So every time only one pass will be conducted, will conduct in the current. It's gonna be here, then here, 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 like this. So just only one drop. Clear here. For the uh, following full wave bridge rectifier, find the rectified DC, again, DC voltage output. A hundred ten, ten to one, eleven, which is RMS and VM equals to VRMS times square root of two, and VAV equals to VM times two over pi. We have to consider the voltage drop of the dial. So, how many drops? Two. <laughs> we just did it, right? So now you know there are two drops. Great. This one. So here is one equation you need to know. Um, so C equals to I load over uh, F times B ripple, I think. Make sure I'm right. Yeah, F times B ripple. So that's F out. V ripple is this, is the voltage here, see? Which is the noise, you, don't, you actually don't want too many, a huge ripple, v, uh, ripple voltage. So that's the uh, goal, okay? The goal is a one volt ripple voltage. And it is asking for the value of the cap to reach that goal. You can have a small capacitor which cannot handle a uh, large noise. If you have a huge capacitor, can smooth out more noise. So that's why if you have a goal like one volt ripple, which is the maximum ripple uh, for the output voltage, and you are calculating back for the cap you need to use for the circuit. And I load is calculated by VAV over R load. Okay, what is F? This is given, right? That's a goal, it's given. What is F? What is F? 120 hertz. That's the output at frequency, keep in mind, and not the input. 
If this is a half wave rectifier, what is that? 60 hertz. This half wave looks like this. That's one period, still 60 hertz. A full wave, mm, 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 mm. 120 hertz. For full wave rectifier, you are using 120 hertz. For half wave, you are using 60 hertz. But however, they are, they are using the same equation. I over F times ripple, and you're getting a C. So when you're designing a DC power supply for the robot, starting from the transformer level, you know plugging, you're getting 120 volts, 120, 110. So 110 volts AC, and you, you can order a transformer, put it into the circuit, and get AC output, and you need to design, depends on the ripple voltage requirement from the customer, right? You can design a capacitor for your um, DC output. Not just for robot, for anything. Okay? And uh, next week, we are going to cover everything behind this. So it's going to follow from this point, and there will be another DC-DC converter. So this is actually the output of the adapter, since you have adapters for laptops, right? So that when you plug in, you get a DC voltage. Normally it's 12 volts, 20 volts DC. So that's exactly whatever from here. And you still need, after you plug into the jet connector, you still need a, the DC regulators in that control. We, we mentioned that, right? So the AMS 1117, so that one, for other types of DC regulators, you'll need to stabilize or step down anything to a lower DC voltage. All right, that's it for today. You should be ready for this homework. <laughs>